Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. I'm kind of in this little mini series, if you want to call it that, about suicide. I started talking about what the unpardonable sin was, what it really is, according to Jesus and read, and rolled into talking about that suicide is not the unforgivable sin. I think the problem that we have through religious teachings is that we think that when someone dies here in the flesh, it is the end of the end of the end, and there's nothing changing after that point. And friends, the Bible does not teach that. And actually, yesterday, I just went through a bunch of scriptures, just one right after the other. And in one of those, it talked about how Jesus went to the spiritual realm and ministered to people who were dead, okay, who had already died. Now, are we going to sit here and tell the Creator, our Creator, that we're going to limit Him and His power to what He or us, actually, it's not even what He's able to do, what we're able to do through our religious works of getting to every person and telling them that they have to believe in Jesus or they're going to go to hell to be tortured by God. And see, that's not even really in your Bible. I know that's a paradigm shift for a lot of people because we've been taught that, that the reason that we want to go out and minister to people is so they don't go to hell. No, we go out and minister to people so they can know Jesus. He gives eternal life. He's the only source of eternal life. So what they get eternal life here and now. They get to step into a new life through following him and all of the bad things in their life starts falling off of them because they're following Jesus. I hope that helps a little. But anyway, uh, as I rolled over into this series, I was answering a question that someone basically asked and said, if someone commits suicide, do they go to hell? Now, so part of that was linked to the unpardonable or unforgivable sin and our religious belief that God is limited to using his power in the flesh realm. And God, Jesus went into the spirit realm to do what was necessary to set us free from the powers of darkness and through the power of death that the devil had over us. I mean, I need to do a teaching on that next. Maybe I'll write that down uh, about the power of death. I'm just going to talk about that tomorrow, okay? And I want to do a teaching on that as well. But uh, today I'm going to read a question to you, and this is from Randy. He put it posted out in public, so I know he don't mind. He says, thank you, Faith, for uh, this teaching. I learned a few things in this one uh, teaching today that I did not know, talking about yesterday's teaching. With that said, however, I didn't hear that someone who commits suicide would not go to hell. Now, I have not heard all of your teachings on this subject, so I will continue to watch and listen to the rest. Thank you for investing your time to research this out and to teach what you have found. You are very much appreciated, more than you know. God bless you. And thank you, Randy. I love to... to uh, look at messages and answer questions because we're all growing and I want every one of us to grow up into the maturity and the knowledge of Christ, okay, because perfect love cast out fear. How do you get to perfect mature love? By knowing Jesus, right, and really understanding the heart of the Father and the heart of Jesus. So let me say this, Randy. Uh, number one, <laughs> I'm going to mess everybody up now. You're going to have to prove to me that the false doctrine created by the Roman Catholic Church about hell, this place of eternal conscious torment, actually exists. Because uh, I would argue the fact that it does not. Uh, I've spent over a year uh, studying the doctrine, the Catholic doctrine of eternal conscious torment uh, of hell, uh, that was put in the church around 400 A.D., which is absolute, total heresy. The church did not believe that in its beginning, okay? Uh, now, is there a judgment? Is there a punishment? Is there a punishment with the goal, okay, of correction and bringing people into the fullness and the knowledge of God? Absolutely. That is true. So, uh, let me say this, okay? Uh, a lot of what we link to this place called hell, 
uh, comes from the Latin Vulgate, and they took four uh, in 400 A.D. Uh, Saint Jerome translated the Bible for the Roman Catholic Church. Okay, for it to be their official Bible. Did you know every Bible that we have pretty much in America? uses the Latin Vulgate for their translations, okay? And it's called Texas Receptus, and it's the text that's been received. And there's not one Bible that I have found that doesn't have a little bit of the Catholic doo-doo sprinkled in it, okay? Uh, so let me go from there and say the, the people like to flip over to Revelation and talk about the lake of fire. And actually, most believers uh, wrongly believe the lake of fire is hell. Now, that doesn't make sense when Jesus says that uh, he has taken death and hell and cast both of them into the lake of fire. How do you take hell and cast hell into hell? Because those are actually completely different words, completely different symbols, and uh, referencing something totally different. I'll do a teaching on that as well. But getting back into what I want to talk about today, uh, suicide is not the unforgivable sin. God has forgiven people after death. I proved that yesterday in Scripture. He went and witnessed to and, and ministered to people who had died in rebellion. When Jesus died, he went into the spirit realm and witnessed to dead people about the truth. Okay, so if he loved people enough to do it then, he still loves us the same, and he's going to do that again. And I will repeat this today. Jesus Christ, Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, every person who has ever lived will come face to face with him. They will come face to face with truth, okay? Now, getting down to people going to hell. I want to talk about that a little bit. Uh, there's two different beliefs about the afterlife when it comes to uh, Jesus ministering to people in the spirit realm to bring them through judgment, punishment, correction, and giving them their free will opportunity, by the way, to come into the kingdom of God, okay? God never violates a person's free will, even in his redemption and reconciliation, okay? So, uh, some believe that the moment a person dies, whether they're a Christian or not, see Jesus immediately. Christians or believers, I should say, people who believe uh, in God, and they go to a heavenly realm, and people that do not believe go into a uh, spiritual torment, not a true fire where physical people are dangling, okay, over a, a flame, but through a torment of, of reconciliation of battling between the lies they're holding on to and the truth that Jesus has revealed to them. Now, there's another belief out there that people who are already believers, if you want to call it already saved, they go immediately to be with Jesus, which I agree with, by the way, and those who don't know Jesus will go into a soul sleep where they will uh, basically be asleep in their grave until the resurrection that's mentioned in uh, the book of Revelation, I believe that's in chapter 20 and 21, okay? Now, what really determines what we believe about does everyone go face-to-face -face with Jesus immediately for their own judgment of you're a believer and you're uh, already in the kingdom or uh, your judgment, punishment, correction to get you into the kingdom through corrective punishment, okay? Uh, and punishment's really not uh, one of the best words, but that's what we use in the English, and I can't stop to teach on that either. But uh, basically, uh, if you understand that the book of Revelation is a lot of symbolism, the concept of every single person sleeping endlessly until that specific day kind of shifts into... Uh, Every person, once they uh, leave their earthly body, will see Jesus immediately. They will come face to face with truth. And I kind of lean toward that because I don't see any gain by God having people just in soul sleep for thousands of years. Uh, and here's another thing. 
Why didn't Jesus just leave the ones prior to the cross in soul sleep? Why did he go to them in the spirit realm? Now, he went to all of them at one time prior to the cross because he had not witnessed to anyone because he had not won the victory to be able to go and do that. But after the cross, he can witness to people one-on-one -on -one as they cross over out of the earth. Now, for the rest of my time, and of course, I'm going to go a little long today here as well, uh, I'm going to read you some scriptures. Now, people will ask me, so are you saying that you're a universalist? Well, first of all, you need to explain to me what you believe the uh, idea of universalism is. Uh, I am a hopeful reconciliation believer. I hope that God is true to his word and that his ultimate goal is to always correct and reconcile his entire creation to himself. Uh, universalists, some fractions, it's just like every other belief system, there's all kinds of stuff out there. I do not believe that every single person is saved right here today, right now, and no matter how they live and what they do, they get their little free ticket into heaven because they said a sinner's prayer. Uh, I've never believed that, and quite frankly, the Bible don't teach that. But for the rest of my time, I'm going to read you some scriptures because, yes, I do absolutely believe Jesus I believe he truly is who he says he is and that God will not fail. His plan of salvation will not fail. He's not going to give up. He's not going to stop. He's going to keep on until he gets what he uh, desires. So let me read some things to you. This is 1 Timothy 4.10. For the sake of this ministry, we toil tirelessly and are criticized continually simply because our hope is in the living God. He is the wonderful life giver, now watch this, the savior of all, all people, all the children of men, and especially to those who believe. Oh my goodness. So Jesus is the savior of all men, especially those of us who believe in him. That's like that, that's an interesting verse. So basically what it's saying here is that God is the Savior of all mankind. Okay, He is the, the sacrifice for the entire world, but he's not going to violate people's own free will, but he will patiently wait until he has time to show them truth and correct them and let them willfully lay down the lies and come to him, okay? Willfully coming to him. Here's 1 John 4, 14, okay? It says, Moreover, we have seen with our own eyes and can testify to the truth that the Father God, that Father God has sent his Son to be the Savior of the entire or the whole world, okay? And here we go in 2 Corinthians 5, 19. In other words, it was through the anointed one, through Christ, that God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting people's sins against them, but canceling them out. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation, that is, restoration with God. Okay, so God wants every person to be reconciled to him through Jesus. And uh, you know what? Religion wants it to be pick and choose. Re religion excludes people, and Jesus is trying to include everyone. So is fa uh, God his Father, right? So let me keep going here. Uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 10. Now this is about Jesus being born. And the angel reassured them, saying... Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all people. It is for everyone, everywhere. Okay, and by the way, Jesus proved that by going into the spirit realm of the dead to minister to them that the Savior of the world has come. And I'm offering it to you today 
on the other side of the grave. Okay, here we go. John chapter 1, verse 29. And the next day, John saw Jesus coming to him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who carries away the sin of the world. Okay, guys, that's my teaching today. I do not believe people who commit suicide are burning in a place called hell because there is no such thing as a place called hell. There is a refining of people to bring them into the kingdom. I'll pick up on this tomorrow. I love you, and I'll see you right here. Bye-bye.